Hi everyone. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for quite a while now and after being asked by a few people um, that are against the location that I went to twice, I've actually been there twice, I've decided to do a video on it <clears throat> and in my own words and how I feel uh, about the location after over 20 years being a paranormal researcher. Very low key, I've been doing it. Um, most of my footage, you won't actually see me on the camera. Anyway, let's just get into it. So the first time I went would have been in 2018. 27th of June, 2018. And I went uh, with three other people uh, to 30 East Drive in Pontefract, you know, the, the Black Monk house. And it's always been on the hit list, I think, for anyone who's into the paranormal, they would want to go. It's, it's just something you want to just sort of tick off the list and say that you've been there. <clears throat> so anyway, we paid the money online. I think it worked out to be £50 a head at the time. And we went along. It was a very, very long drive for, from, from Dorset, where I'm living at the minute. It was about five and a half hours, nearly six hours it took us to get up there. But anyway, we got up there and we had to go to Carol, who's the lady who lives next door. And she's got stories. And if you've ever Googled anything to do with 30 East Drive, you will know who she is. Okay, She's the, the, the caretaker, the cleaner, the, the key holder everything and for a few quid she will go in the house and she will do an interview with you <clears throat> so i agreed with carol beforehand that i would buy her flowers and chocolates and some sweets in exchange for an interview because we were on an incredibly tight budget with everything else she agreed so we got up there uh we knocked on the door we got the keys straight away we have been told or oh, there's this has happened and that's happened and all oh, there's been bangs and there's been all of this stuff going on during the daytime today. So we thought, oh, come, okay, brilliant. We know we'll go in. Um, I didn't actually go in straight away. I actually forgot to get the flowers, the chocolates, and the sweets. I went off to a local Tesco's, grabbed those bits, came back, gave them to Carol, who gave me a quick hug, said thank you, uh, really really liked them, and then she went in and closed the door. So I was like, okay. Okay, fuck it, just write it off. I just wanted to get in and get this, get, get it all going, you know. So, <clears throat> we went in. Uh, now, Michelle, who comes out with quite a few with me, um, she had already gone in uh, with uh, Alison, who, who was with us as well. And I had picked up a, a guy, he's an ex-friend now, but I'd picked up uh, Dan. And we had gone in. As soon as I walked in, now bearing in mind I've done it for a long, 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 long time, and I set out at just before I was so 15 and like three quarters, I say 16 for argument's sake, 16 years old, with the view of either to prove or disprove, I was completely on the fence until my dad died. And then with some money that I got from his death, um, I brought. Uh, some dictaphones and some recording equipment and I actually picked up his voice on it. So that's when I became a full believer. Before I was, I was always on the fence. So I've been into a lot of different places and you can sort of get a feel and everything else. But as soon as I walked into 30 East Drive for the first time, there was a very thick atmosphere. Like you were sort of a bit on edge even walking around. And I remember we went in the, in the main door, uh, turned left into like the kitchen area. And it was weird sort of like being there because I'd seen so much footage and everything else before. I'd done a lot of research on it. And I'd actually watched uh, Paranormal Lockdown when I'd done the Black Monk House the night before. No, no, it was Most Haunted. Sorry, it was Most Haunted. Uh, was it that as well? I, I fucking, there were so fucking many anyway. We watched all of them. Um, so it was weird sort of like being in there and sort of actually getting a bearing of how big everything is and how, you know, how everything was. And... I walked through the kitchen and into the front room and I remember feeling this real deep depressing atmosphere. It was something that I've I've come across before but 
that took that you know that took me by surprise. I was actually thinking at that point maybe you know this this whole black monk thing that there maybe there's something in it. So anyway, we were through the entire night um, doing bits and pieces, uh, obviously using what, what one of my favourite tools, which is the uh, the seven PSP seven box, as long as uh, along with EMF meters doing EVPs, and as the night went on. Um, we in the top bedroom next to the bathroom I believe that was Philip's bedroom the sun uh, we got some sort of growl on tape and that's all that's actually on tape you know we've actually caught that uh, that was a bit of a surprise <clears throat> so I'm not going to go into all the different shit that we've done throughout the night I just get to the main bits all right um, so we got the grow up in Philip's bedroom. Didn't get anything at all in the master bedroom that I can remember. Although I do remember looking up and seeing a black uh, sort of like lead coming out of the ceiling uh, above the the wardrobe. I thought it was a microphone. And the reason why I thought it was one of them is because I've seen the exact same ones in the job centres when they pull you in. Um, to do their little checks and I've seen them <coughs> dotting around and it's like a little black lead like that with a, a thicker black bit on the bottom and anyway there's one of them hanging down according to Carol it's uh, a TV aerial I'm not sure why it'd be above the wardrobe but <coughs> she said it was a TV aerial and I, I can't I didn't go in the loft so I can't prove or disprove that but if you ever do go check that out um, I left the dictaf uh, the, uh, the, the camcorder that I'm using actually now. Um, I left that recording in the kitchen, and we did actually pick up uh, some EVPs. So I, it was it was good, you know. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this is actually pretty cool <laughs> the stuff that we were getting. But there was nothing to prove that there was this demonic black monk, or, or you know, or anything like that there. Um, I think the highlight of my night being in East Drive for the first time was watching the film When the Lights Go Out, which is based on the house, in the house. So we're, we're watching the film about the house that we're in. So I thought that was pretty cool because they've got a DVD player and a TV in there and the film's in the DVD player. So <clears throat> we, we, uh, we watched that, tried to get a little bit of sleep, uh, couldn't really get comfortable and anything. Uh, so it was just sort of like hanging around. We were raising money at the time for Julia's House uh, Children's Hospice uh, in Dorset, and the three of us, Dan didn't because he just didn't. He didn't raise fuck all. But uh, me, my, uh, myself, Alison, and Michelle, we raised. I think it was just over two thousand pound, possibly. I can't actually remember how much it was now, but we raised a good amount of money for that. Um, so we had to stay there sort of like until like you know the next day but uh handed the keys in and and just came home and i remember feeling a bit pissed off that i didn't really get anything so uh anyway the following year we had done the ancient ram in that was good but the year after in 2019 i decided to go back uh, this time i took michelle again and I took my friend Stacy that I've known my, well, since I was 15. So since I started out, I've known Stacy. So she uh, she wanted to come along. I trust her with my life. Um, if she says this is it, and then that's it. She doesn't bullshit. You know, she doesn't lie. She's to the point. So she came along uh, as well. Uh, I was supposed to have uh, a friend of mine uh, come along, but within 20 minutes of him, that he should have been at my house. He called to say that he couldn't make it, all right? So it was just the three of us. So it was like, well, <clears throat> we've paid for it now. Now this time it had actually gone up. The money had gone up. I think we paid 80 pound a head uh, for the four of us. So the money has gone up, all right? And I made a point this time of not going to the front door to get the keys from Carol. I wanted to sort of wait out. Um, so anyway, we drove up there, the three of us, um, and we got there. And when we went in this time, it was completely different. 
actually if I can just just uh, revert back to when the first time when I was there the first time what I haven't actually said uh, I, I actually, I've just remembered now when we had, when I had actually walked in as soon as you walk in the front door there's the um, what the fuck is that the memory's gonna run out. Fuck. <clears throat> right, sorry about that. Um, the SD card was just about to run out, and then I've just, I've literally just spent the last two and a half hours uh, fucking about with it because I couldn't delete anything off of the SD card, it turns out. Anyway, don't worry about none of that. Yeah, so on the, the first visit that, I, that we were, that I we was, um, that I was there, so I'm a bit out of breath. Um, as you go in the front door, directly in front of you, they're now using it as a smoking room. But there used to be uh, a room where they used to, they'd have pictures everywhere of uh, things that had been caught in the house, newspaper cuttings, you know, bits and pieces like that. But in there, and in the cold room, you could see that there was pentagrams um, done out in sand, and there was black candles, and there's bits and pieces like that. The upstairs and downstairs toilets hadn't been flushed, it hadn't been cleaned at all, so I know the people next door are supposed to go in and be the caretakers and clean this stuff between each person going in. It hadn't been done on this occasion, so I just I cleaned it the best that I could, because I didn't want the other three people that uh, that was with me to see any of that. Um, anyway, going back to the second time we had gone, um, I decided I wanted to go back. I wanted to give it another try just to see if it was a bad night and just sort of see, <laughs> you know, it just for my own peace of mind. I just wanted, I just needed to go back. And we did. Um, myself, uh, Michelle, and Stacey pulled up in my car. And as we actually got close, there was a huge group of kids um, loitering around outside. So I made a point of not going straight onto the drive because of the expense of my camera that I'm using now and my kit I just didn't want any of that being robbed so we went all the way around the block and I actually parked up on the opposite side outside Carol's house just at the opposite end um, we got our stuff got the stuff out of the car uh, Michelle got the keys from Carol we went in and this time it was a completely different atmosphere completely different and although there's signs everywhere saying, you know, no Ouija boards and, and all this other stuff, you could tell it's being done regularly because it's all over YouTube. People are doing this stuff in the house. Uh, the second time we was there, I didn't get any EVPs. Um, it was a shit night. Really, really shit. And, and I know I, I'm the first one. I've said it in, uh, in a few books that I've written that... Ghost hunting or paranormal, you know, research is a lot like fishing. You can't guarantee that you're going to get something every time you go just because the TV companies find uh, things in the real world it doesn't work like that. But I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that 30 East Drive is just one big money maker. It's one big uh, paranormal hotspot that's I don't know what's the word I'm looking for it's bullshit I've asked a few questions on a uh, a page which is run by a lot of people to do with 30 East Drive and they've all got stories oh fucking hell this has happened and this has happened and this has happened but everybody with this, this coming out with these stories and everything else, have all got like a some sort of financial link to the house. So the more stories there are, the more people that are gonna come in and come in and want to be a part of it and want to see this stuff. Okay, so it's good to have these stories of bad shit going on. Twice I've been. There's been no evidence at all that I can see of the, you know, this this demon, this black monk. I think what I felt the first time that I went in there was a mix of 
shock that I was actually there and the fact that the spirits that are there that are, are, that are trapped there I'm not saying that it's not haunted I'm not saying that there's not nothing there but I don't think it's any different to any other property that's got a ghost problem I think you know my house is like an occupational hazard I've bought a lot of shit in I think it's um I could have just stayed here you know the owner of the house got the house on the cheap oh, he's making an absolute killing and why not why fucking not I would if I had 30 years drive yeah you're fucking right you'd be hearing all sorts of shit you'd be seeing pictures video footage of fucking things being knocked you'd see the fucking lot and I would clean up so I completely understand um, why they're carrying on doing it but from a, a, a genuine paranormal background the, that I follow I don't believe that there's anything there worth going to see I think the reason you would go is because you haven't been and you just sort of like want to go in there's a lot of companies now that are making an absolute fortune out of this place so the owner him and his wife they're making quite a bit of money out of it and then you get all these other little paranormal groups that are renting it out and they're having 10, 15 people go in. How can you have a group of people downstairs and a group of people upstairs all doing different things and you're like, oh, did you hear that bang? Yeah, that's a fucking ghost. Well, no, it's because some dickhead upstairs has just knocked something over. You can't debunk things. There's too many people in the house. This is why each time that I've gone, I've only gone for maximum of four. So we can downstairs and upstairs at the same time we can sort of separate out or be all together so if something does happen more than one person hopefully will see it and this the 30 east drive has it's got itself a reputation because of the tv shows because of paranormal lockdown because of most haunted and now because of these paranormal groups that are going in they're doing live seances they're doing live streams they're doing all this different stuff to get views on their channel and it's just one big um, it's a circus it's a paranormal circus where seven days a week 365 days a year you can rent that property out by the night or over a longer period you can go in and get ghosts that are there, the ones that have been brought in by seances and everything else that are probably now trapped to perform. Like that knock. I'll roll a fucking ball, do this. It's a, it's a circus, it's like a paranormal freak show. People are coming in and getting these spirits to perform every night, every night of the week. And they've all got, oh fucking hell, you know, this has happened and that's happened and you get people who have got no fucking idea. They're just fans of paranormal, they've never done it themselves. And they're commenting, oh, you're so brave and I couldn't do this and everything else. And these people are, are, are feeding off of that. And they'll carry on going out and doing it. I think it would be good if the, the Pritchard family, who made the house as famous as it is now, were to do an interview. Where's Diane? Why has she never come forward? And I'm starting to think that these stories were bullshit. Reason being, if you had, if something had happened to you, you wouldn't just go into hiding after it's been, you've been to the press and everything's been blown out of proportion and it's, and it's got big and they've made a film on it. You could make a killing. You could make an absolute fortune. You could write a book. Uh, you could go to the house. You could stand outside and meet these groups and charge. Um, you could charge for interviews. Um, you could do a video, but they haven't done anything. I can't f find anything to do with them whatsoever. I mean, like, people relate to the house. Oh yeah, well, fucking hell, I spoke to so-and-so last week. He came over here, and this person came around to cut the grass, and then he's friends of so-and-so, and he said this. And it's all these stories to keep bringing people in to feed the bullshit. And that's what it is. I genuinely believe that 30 East Drive has got some sort of haunting but the reason why it's got some sort of haunting is it's being used every night of the week by large groups of people and from what I've heard even during lockdown that we're in now with COVID-19 there are still people going in 
even now during lockdown that people are still going in there with these groups. Um, I might be wrong, but I've just I have seen some footage online that says we're in lockdown and we're in this property. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Me personally, I, there is no black monk. Maybe there was, but he's definitely not there now. Why would you be? Why would you want to stay in that fucking house? The highlight for me, of the first time I went, was watching the film about the house in the house. And the second time was the takeaway. We had an amazing pizza. <laughs> it was really fucking good. And it's so cheap up in Leeds compared to down in the south. Um, and it was spending time, you know, I hadn't seen Stacey for a while, so I got to spend time with her. We, know we had a, got to have a catch up. So... Um, it was good for those reasons, but I don't think there's a black monk there. But the stories that are coming out every day, I know I keep sort of going around uh, the long way around here, but um, it's just my way of sort of like trying to get it out. I don't generally believe that there is a black monk there now. If there was, it's definitely gone. I'm not saying that something ha didn't happen to Diane and there's not some sort of truth behind these stories because something would have happened to have, have kick-started it off. But I don't think from a paranormal view um, it's worth going to or paying out that sort of money. It's not, it's not worth going to. It's exactly the same with the ancient Ram Inn. Um, the, the lady who was running it texted me on the day saying that a load of bed sheets have been ripped by a look like a knife or whatever. Can I keep an eye on things? Think anything, nothing at all. It was shit. Um, it was fucking boiling. But th th this is how people are making money now. They're using these properties and they're renting them out, saying that there's ghosts and everything else. You just need to be on the ball. You just need to think about what you're going to get yourself into. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, if you want to go to, this is just my personal opinion. If you believe that the Black Monk is there and all this stuff is genuine and really going on, good for you, crack on with it, be happy. That's all we've got to be in life is just be happy, go along with it. But for people that are new to it and want to go into it, don't waste your money, don't go to East Drive. It is full of con people and teams that are making these YouTube channels because they genuinely believe that they're making TV shows and they want to be famous and... Every shot is like this, that they're on the camera. Um, if you go on my channel and look through of some of the paranormal ones that I've actually kept up, I've deleted a lot off now, but the ones that I have kept up, if you look on them, I'm not in any of the footage. I don't actually show people because what you can see here, I would rather have that all exposed to see if I can pick something up. Because if you keep filming yourself... You're not looking at what's behind you. You need to be keeping an eye out all the time. No one gives a shit if you're uh, in front of the camera or behind it. All right, People want proper footage. But no one's getting any proper footage these days because we all assume that we're going out looking for these uh, people in Victorian dress. Oh, there was a guy in a top hat walking down. Why can't we have hauntings of, you know, I've never had anyone message me to say, oh, yeah, we've got some hoodie, some chav in the house that got stabbed due to some drug thing up the road, and he's in our fucking house haunting it, smoking weed and shit, and he's going around causing all sorts of shit. It's always nice, it's always this, it's an old witch. It's, uh, you know, it's an old Victorian person. It, it, it's somebody, you know, from the, the 70s, the 80s. It's never anybody now, is it? And that's exactly the same with East Drive. It's, oh, there's a monk. Well, maybe there was something there at that time. And it's fucking gone. Who the fuck would want to stay around with everyone? Can you knock? Can you hear that? Can you knock three times? Can you click your fingers if you can see me? Can you hear me? Kick the fucking football across the wall. You know, the room. Blow the ping pong balls. Fuck off. <laughs> it's just not going to fucking happen, is it? So, uh, anyway... Sorry this has all been up and down and all fucked up. It's not the video that I necessarily set out to to, to, uh, to film today. Um, but I just wanted to say a few words. So, 
best of luck. Hopefully, you do, if you do, uh, you know, spend out over two hundred pound for a night in a, in a house in Leeds, um, that you do find something. But bearing in mind, um, while something that I wasn't told um, when I booked or leading up to when I actually got there, there were large groups of kids in the area throwing stones at the windows when you're in there. They're going onto the property. They're knocking on the door, running away. They're knocking on the windows. They're trying to look through the windows. Um, they're becoming a pain in the ass. There's also a lot of boy races in the area because when we, both times I've been there, there's been motorbikes, there's cars up and down the fucking road and it's on the footage and you're like, fucking hell. There was um, one footage that I actually that I actually saw. You could actually hear a car in the background and I'm like, oh, that's a growl. And I'm thinking, no, it's the fucking, you're, there's a roundabout outside the fucking house. It's quite busy. It's a fucking car. It's also on a main bus route. So you need to think about all that. Okay, because they're not going to tell you. Because it's all about the fucking money. That's what it's about. And you would think, as humans, we would think to ourselves, well, how would we feel if you know we'd passed on or we're now trapped in a property? It's like a paranormal prison, and now you're stuck in there asking to perform every night. You can't rest, you can't move on. Places like that need to be fully cleansed. I just moved on, you know. The housing crisis in the UK at the minute is, un, you know, is, is unreal. You could fit a family of five in that house, and that's a, that's a you know a, a family that are in a refuge or uh, stuck in a B and B. They could use a property like that. There are families out there now that could use properties like that, but while they're bringing in the money, that's just every night of the week they're just going in. Same bullshit, the same paranormal groups that uh, I remember when I started out, there wasn't any of this. You know, people used to take the piss out of me, they used to laugh at me. Oh, you're chasing fucking guy. Yeah. Now, it's the end thing. I went to uh, uh, a horror convention in Sheffield in 2015, 2016, and there was a paranormal team there selling autographs. And I fucking, I shit you not, there was a paranormal team, they had all this old shit left out on the table with all, the, all these haunted items, right, and uh, showing some of their kit, but for five quid, you could have your photo taken with the team. What the fuck? This is what I mean, alright? If you're going to go and do paranormal investigations, do it properly, keep yourself off the camera, stick to what you're doing. And if there's nothing there, be honest and say there was nothing there. You can still upload it and just show you what you were doing over the night and how you know professional you are. But just think about it. As for 30 East Drive, I don't believe it's haunted. I don't believe... Well, there's spirits there. I definitely think there's something there, but it's no different to the house that you're in now. Uh, you know, in my house, we hear things all the time, little bangs, little bits and pieces. Um, you can feel sort of stuff. But um, 30 East Drive is no different than your average haunted pub, for instance. You know, go to a pub. There's a lot of pubs that will let you go in. Um, I don't want even a fucking charger. And you can do it on your fucking doorstep. And you can have a few drinks in there, you know. 30 East Drive is a money maker. That's why there's so many um, stories and everything else. It's so, so just... Just think about it, all right? It's the same with uh, the ancient Ram Inn. When we went there, we didn't get anything at all. You could walk around. Um, I think, uh, I'm gonna, actually, I want to do a video on that. I want to do a video on the ancient Ram Inn. I'll leave that separate. But uh, 30 years drive, save your money. Don't listen to the bullshit stories. Don't pay anyone locally to come in and give you an interview because every story is fucking different. Um, one story was, oh, I'll never go inside that property. Another one, give me 50 quid and I'll come in there and sit down and I'll do this and then I'll do this and I'll do that. Don't let bullshit cloud the judgment, alright? And uh, I wish you all the best. Be lucky.